Question is from Rabri. If you're employed by a gym that provides you with leads and clients, is it inappropriate to also develop your training business outside of the club? Not everyone who wants to train with me wants to pay for the gym's membership. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you picked. What, did you pick this one? I Justin? picked this one. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you picked this one. So I, I, I think, I think it's bad. Yeah. Oh well, I was just gonna well, say. Yeah, we'll talk about this. all you look at. Here's the thing: when it comes to your career and your business, one of the most important things. Look, it's like fitness. When you look at your fitness goals, there's ways to get to a particular goal fast, and then yes. there's ways to get to a goal with integrity, long term, forever, long term success. A lot of it's determined on your integrity, and and your integrity is determined by the people around you who've worked with you. And if you're working for a gym that's providing you with leads and clients, um, to maintain your integrity, if those clients want to hire you, you train them in that gym. Yeah. You don't take them outside that gym because that's you might get more clients and make more money in the short term, but I'm going to tell you something right now, in the long term, it, people will start to find out. It's a and false. Not be it's a false perception too. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I did this. Okay. So, and this was really important to me. So when I when so t when I went through my 24 hour fitness career, there was a point about when I was 25 ish, somewhere around that range, where they started to put a ceiling on how much money we could make. And I, a guy like me hated that. I like I, one of the things I loved about that career was the more I worked, the more I sold, the more successful my my club was, the more money I made. And so I was and I was very money motivated. And at one point, the company sold and changed, and they put a ceiling on it. And they got to a point where no matter how much money I sold, no matter what I did, I, I could no longer make any more income. And I had, at that point in my life, I got used to making a certain amount of money. I had, I had a lifestyle that I liked, that I was used to. And I was like, what the fuck do I do? And it was forbidden. Moonlighting was forbidden there. If they found out that you were training, you're fired, clock, you're fired for sure. And so I, I had this dilemma, like, man, what do I do? Like, this is fucked. Like, I'm in this situation where they won't allow me to go that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And then I did it, which I'm not supposed to do. But when I did it, the thing that I, I said to myself before I did it, it's like, I am not going to pull from any leads from this gym. If I'm going to look outside and build a business that's separate, I don't want I don't want to have anything to do with this. And it wasn't just for it was for integrity reasons because I, I I definitely believe I have that and that was a purpose. It also was because I wanted to prove that I could build the business without the company's assistant help. Because if I just pulled from all their leads, yeah, you have a false sense of how awesome you think you are. And you that's know? what I meant by the fault. You yeah. have a false perception of the ability to really build a business because mm -hmm. you're using this company that's probably paying money to advertise or drive leads, or they have a storefront. And so people come in and you don't have to pay for that. And so then you start, I mean, how many times have you guys seen that? How many guys have, have oh, you had trainers that work for you right. that Dude, think that they're awesome, oh, yeah. Yeah, that they could build a, t a huge business, but all they're doing is pulling from well, the because all they look at is then how much is like getting carved off your paycheck, right? And, and they don't look at like all the the marketing materials. They don't look at like you know the insurance umbrella that you're under. They don't look at like all these different like leads coming every single day coming to you. And when you're out there on your own, man, it is it is a harsh well, that's reality. The, that, not only is it harsh, and this is the conversation. I used to have this conversation a lot. This was a common conversation with with trainers that work for me. And that is that, you know, to your point, Justin, you know, 24 hour fitness used to spend $25 million a year in advertising and lead generation. Yep. And, you know, as, as this, the small person on the podium toll here, the trainer who clocks in and, and, and gets paid their you know, toll. Yeah, $25 <laughs> to $50 uh, an hour to, to train uh, clients is going like, oh my God, I'm only getting half the money that the business is getting. And they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, they do the most in fucking important thing. They get people to walk through that door because if you didn't, if they didn't walk through that door, where the fuck are you going to get them? The grocery store, out on the street. You know how hard that is. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable. That's the hardest part. It is the hardest part by far. So by you poaching people that have already been driven into your gym, so you can hustle and make a little bit more money. I mean, one, it's I think it's 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 not having integrity, yeah. and two, you you really haven't built a business. Yeah. I don't care if it's it's generating an extra fifty grand to a hundred grand a year for you. If the leads are coming from the business that you're currently working from, you didn't build a and, business. And if they cut that off, and you because I've had trainers do this where they're like, I've built, I have tons of clients I've built on my own. I, I think I'm going to leave and go try on my own. And I know, yeah, I know how you're getting your clients. It's through yeah. the leads that the gym's generating. Then they go off on their own and it lasts the grand total of six months yeah. because they don't they no longer have those leads. They no longer and clients drop off. 
and then they're screwed. And now where are they going to go? They're not going to go back to the gym because the gym is like, screw you, you were taking our I our, used our to customers. tell all my trainers that were even considering going off and doing their own thing, if you haven't figured out how to be the number one guy or the number one girl in this facility, you're not going to do dick when you leave here. And I'm sorry to tell you true. that. Yep. But if you can't figure it out with all the shit, that the, the, all the hard stuff that you, you don't think is really hard being taken care of for you, a facility that with the equipment that somebody's servicing and taking care of, somebody's scanning to check in and welcome them in, running all the back end and systems and bookkeeping, somebody advertising, generating leads for you, having the lights on for you know X yeah. amount of hours, all the shit that you don't think about. That's why you make only. 50%. I remember having that conversation with you. It's one of those things like I purposely like shied away a lot of clients that were immediately going to follow me to the next gym, but I wanted to see if I could do it. The whole point of it was, how am I going to be able to keep building and sustaining my own business if I'm doing this on my own? What does this new venture look like? How I need to be, I, had, I figured out right away, I had to be one of the trainers that was more professional, had you know everything together, had a website. None of these other trainers had their own website. Like there's just, there was so many steps I had to take. And if I wasn't going to look at that and really like assess what needed to happen for me to be, start generating my own uh, my own leads in my own business, uh, you know, I would have been all comfortable with the ten to twenty clients that I brought over, and then that would have been yeah. in my whole business. And by the way, just because you are the top trainer in your gym, that still doesn't guarantee you're going to be successful. No, on your own. no, that's it's just it's just <laughs> it's a guarantee you're not going to be successful if, if you can't not. be the top yeah, trainer. Yes, yeah. yes, and then you go off on your own. I can pretty much guarantee. It's still hard. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I had many of my top guys or girls that work for me that were killing it in the facility go off and try and do it on their own, and they just they ended up coming back more often yeah. than not. They come back yeah. because yeah. it's it's there's a lot that you don't think about. So now there's a second part to this question, which is not everyone who wants to train with me wants to pay for the gym's membership. Look, I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you communicate to a client, if someone comes to you and says, "Hey, look, I want to hire you, but I don't want to pay for the gym membership." Um, but you know, so can we do this on the side and you tell them, you know, unfortunately I can't, I work for the gym. Um, I have an agreement with them. I only can train their client, the clients in here that communicates a great level of integrity out to the people who want, may want, might want to hire you. And I tell you what, that goes right. very far. Yeah. Remember your, remember your job as a personal trainer, your job as a trainer is to help people get to their fitness and health goals. And that means they have to trust you. And if you've already built kind of this facade that you're sneaky on the side type of deal, right. you're going to lose your power as a trainer as well. It's all built on integrity. All of it, 100% built on integrity. Well, and if you're also struggling to convince somebody to spend an extra $30 a month, uh, you, you got to become a better trainer. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, if you, if you, if people's, you know, the reason why they're not signing up for you is because the twenty nine ninety nine yeah. a month they got to pay for the gym membership. Like, what kind of value are you building in yourself? Yeah. You ain't that good. No, you got to work on your skills. You have that much time to go outside the gym and like yeah. all that wasted time, like yeah. where you could just be stacking clients. Like, mm -hmm. well, like, just focus on that. No, that's actually a good point too. I think a lot of trainers don't realize that. Like, let's it say you even equate to the same. Yeah, let's say you train you know, five people a day in that gym and then you have like two clients off site. Um, the going back and forth between them kills a lot of time. It actually doesn't make you as much money as you think because of all the different locations that you're training people. It's not as especially, awesome as it sounds. Especially you know? since the if you're really maximizing your time and, and trying to in, build your business, every extra minute that you can spend on your floor in mm -hmm. a gym, which by the way, is providing the leads for you, okay? And right now, you listen to this shit probably on the treadmill or inside your fucking gym yeah, right now. Look around. And there's probably 30 <laughs> to 50 people in there right now that you didn't have to go get. And they're right there for you to talk to. And if you're not talking to them and you're not getting those leads, you're already fucking missing out. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things to do as a general manager is I would take my trainers in, we'd have conversations around this, and they'd be like, but how do I how do I get leads or whatever? And I point to the my my, my office window and I go yeah. look out there. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, I know, but it's so hard. So I'd say, you know what? Come with me. I used to do this all the time. I go, come with me. And we walk out to the workout floor. And within thirty minutes, I'd book them several goal assessments. And sometimes I'd actually yeah. get them a client 
uh, right then on right you, then. You know, the easier there than yes. outside yes. of there. You know, oh it's really God. hard. You got to convince them that fitness is a good idea. Right. They already know, like they want to. They're improve, there, but yeah. they're not. It's doing a warm it. lead already. Yeah, it's yeah. like come on. Try starting up a conversation with someone to do a goal assessment with you. That's in the grocery at, store at the Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, or the yeah, yeah, grocery yeah. store. <laughs> really though, I mean, if you're out of shape. If, I need if, to get you, the gym. if you haven't done that before, you? you should. If you ever think about leaving a gym, like if you're if you're a trainer listening right now, you're tired of your fucking corporate gym you work for, and you're gonna you're thinking about going private. I urge you to go to your local Safeway, Starbucks, and try and convince three to five people to come in the gym and, and do a free assessment yeah, with just you. a free workout. If yeah. you haven't fucking done that yet, you better learn to do that because it's a lot harder to drive people into your private facility or location you're working on than it is working for some Oh my God, I could, I could park myself at the front desk and book 10 appointments within an hour easily at a gym. Yeah. Boy, do that it's out very, in the real world. It's almost too easy. Very difficult. 